Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and welcome to Biology Essentials video number 23. This is on plant and animal defense mechanisms. Uh, plants and animals are constantly trying to be invaded, um, and they have a couple of different strategies they can use to defend themselves. Um, plants will use non-specific defense in general. They don't have an immune response per se. Um, what they'll do is actually kill themselves, and I'll explain that in just a second. And then we have a specific response. In other words, we have a, uh, mammals are going to have a complex immune response so they can identify uh, organisms that have infected them in the past. So this is chickenpox here. Uh, and if you receive chickenpox when you were young, you'll never get it again because you have this immunity that'll last a lifetime. And we can actually give you a vaccine uh, a lot of kids today are vaccinated for chicken pox, and so they'll never um, get it. And so today I'm going to talk about, first of all, um, pathogens. Pathogens are things that invade us. In general, pathogens are bad, so we don't want them uh, to invade us. And so to defend ourselves, we have a couple of different defense mechanisms. Some are nonspecific. Nonspecific non defense is going to kill anything that invades us. And so for us, um, if you get, uh, let's say you prick your finger with a needle, it's going to swell up. And what you're going to do is you're going to kill anything that moves inside your body doesn't matter what it is, you're just going to destroy it. And the skin is actually forms a protective barrier around us and gives us quite a bit of that non-specific defense. But we're probably not familiar with plants and how they defend themselves. They use something called a hypersensitive response. They can sense a pathogen invading them. Um, they also have cell walls, obviously things that protect them. But once they are invaded, um, they have a pretty dramatic uh, defense mechanism. In us, we use a specific defense. And so we're going to identify actual pathogens that have invaded us and we're going to target them specifically we break our specific defense into two different types. We have humoral response. Humoral response is going to be in, found in the humors or in the liquids of your body, for example, in your blood or in your lymphatic material. It's generally governed by B lymphocytes. And what they do is they produce antibodies uh, to mark antigens for, for destruction. Um, we can hold on to memory B cells for the rest of our life, and that's why you can never get chickenpox again. We also have a cell-mediated response. I'm missing an E here. Cell-mediated response response is going to be targeting cells inside our body that are actually infected. So for example, chickenpox is going to infect cells with viruses, and so we want to target them and kill them as well. The major cell is going to be a type of uh, white blood cell called the cytotoxic T cell. What it does is it kills all the infected cells in your body. So let's get to the, some of the specifics. Let's start, first start with the nonspecific response. Nonspecific, remember, is going to kill any pathogen um, that invades the, uh, the organism. So for us, our nonspecific response is going to be things like our skin, saliva. Um, we're going to have uh, normal bacteria that live on our body just to kind of crowd those off. But right here what we're looking at is a plant defense. And plants show what's called a hypersensitive or a really, really sensitive response. And so think of this as a leaf of like a tobacco plant, for example. And this is a bacteria that's trying to infect that plant. The bacteria is going to give off protein and we'll talk more about those later, um, but those proteins are going to be sensed by the plant. And so what I tried to just kind of simplify is this is the chromosome, a simple chromosome inside a plant. And what they have is a gene called an R gene, and the goal of the R gene is to sense those invading proteins. And so if there's ever a match between those proteins and the R gene, then plants are going to undergo what's called a hypersensitive response. And so first you have to have a sensation. Next thing that they're going to do is they're actually going to uh, set off what's called an oxidative burst. It's a pretty cool name, but what it really means is they're going to free up all the excess highly reactive oxygen they have inside the cell. And so what that eventually does is apoptosis. It kills the plant cells. So they're going to destroy the cells that sense, even though it might not be infected, even though this pathogen may not have even infected those cells, just picking up those proteins is going to kill the cell. And so we're going to destroy those cells, and it's also going to give off a number of proteins that are going to affect the cells right next to it. So not only have we killed these cells, but it's going to change, proteins are going to be released that are going to change the cell wall of all the adjacent cells. And so what would that look like? Well, if this is a tobacco plant, just having pathogens on its surface is going to cause that all those cells inside this uh, infected area to actually die. They kill themselves, and you'll see this on leaves if you start looking for it. 
they'll kill themselves, those eventually die, and then all the cells around it, so all the cells out here are going to change their appearance and so they're not able to be uh, infected. And so that's a hypersensitive response. Um, it's going to target any kind of invader. So whatever bacteria, protein, uh, fungus, virus, whatever's trying to get in, it's going to destroy the cells and then it's going to form lesions around it so it can't be infected. Now, it doesn't have memory and so the next time it's infected by that pathogen, it has to undergo hypersensitive response as well. In mammals, we have that. In other words, swelling, uh, inflammation, all those things are going to be a nonspecific response. But what's cool about us is that we have a specific response. In other words, once, we're, once we get a cold, we'll never get that same cold again. Once we get chickenpox, we'll never get chickenpox again. Now, it could manifest itself as some other kind of a, uh, a disease like shingles or the, the cold could mutate. But in general, once we have that uh, infection, we can't get it again. So this guy right here is a great example of... Of, uh, immune response. This is Edward Jenner. Um, and back in the day, the number of people that were being killed by smallpox was um, unbelievable. We're talking about millions of people that were being infected by uh, smallpox. I didn't even put pictures of people with smallpox on here because it's pretty revolting, actually. Um, awful way to die, to die of smallpox. But this is what the virus looks like. And what Jenner noticed is that women that were milkmaids that were picking up a disease called cowpox, cowpox will form on the udders of a cow, but it also was transferred to these women, they were given an immunity to smallpox. In other words, somehow by picking up the cowpox disease, you couldn't get smallpox as well. Now, Jenner didn't understand antibodies and how they work. We now understand what happens is that these Y-shaped proteins were being secreted in the body of a person who gets smallpox, and what they do is they mark the virus. Now, not only do they mark the virus, so a big thing like a macrophage can actually eat it, but they'll actually adhere this one to this one. So they stick the viruses together, and then they mark them and so that they'll be eaten by a, a, uh, a macrophage and destroy it. And so um, proteins are going to look like this. So this would be an antibody. These are secreted by B cells inside our body. But here's the active part. In other words, there's going to be a specific shape on the antibody. And if that specific shape meets a specific shape on the antigen, now I should talk about what an antigen is. An antigen is going to be a antibody generating uh, organism. And so it could be things like a virus. It could be things like a bacteria. It could be things like a fungus. Um, all of these things have proteins on their surface, and if the protein fits a specific antibody inside our body, then we're going to make a defense against them. And so these antibodies will stay with us for the rest of our life, and so we can't get that. So if you think about it, how did Edward Jenner, who eventually added cowpox to people, inoculated people with cowpox so they couldn't get smallpox, how did that work? He wasn't giving them smallpox, he was just giving them cowpox. Well, the cowpox virus had proteins on its surface that looked enough like the smallpox virus so that it actually made antibodies and so it protected against that. And so the specific response, again, is targeting an invader so that we never get that same disease again. We can never get that same infection um, again. And so this is the best kind of a diagram. It's really complex, the immune system. I'm not going to get too in-depth on it, but essentially what you have is an antigen. Remember, that's going to be an infector or an invader. Um, it's going to be eaten by a white blood cell or macrophage inside uh, our body. Um, it's going to recognize that it's not us, and it's going to present proteins of that antigen on its surface. And so that actual cell is called an antigen presenting cell. And so it's going to chop up that antigen. It's going to pre present its, uh, its proteins on its surface. And then we come to the most important cell in all of the immune response. It's called the helper T cell. What the helper T cell is going to do is it's going to recognize the shape of that antigen. It's going to recognize the shape. It's going to activate B cells to make antibodies. And those antibodies, remember, are going to adhere to the antigen. It's going to make two types of uh, B cells. It's going to make plasma B cells. A plasma B cell is going to be a cell that actually makes antibodies. And the other type of, memory, uh, of B cell it's going to make is something called a memory B cell. Memory B cells are going to be B cells that have anti 
bodies on their surface, and we keep those for the rest of our lives so we can produce more antibodies really, really quickly. So it's going to sense the shape, the helper T cell, and make these B cells so it can make antibodies. It's also going to be helper T cell is going to activate killer T cells, and so those killer T cells are going to affect infected cells inside our body. And so remember, there are two types of response. There's a cell-mediated response. Who's in charge of that? Those are going to be the T cells, the cytotoxic or the killer T cells. So all the infected cells inside our body, now that they sense the shape of that antigen, are going to kill our own cells that are infected. And also we have the humoral response. In other words, we're going to use B cells to make antibodies, to make these memory B cells, and so that we can target the actual antigens. And so humoral response is going to target antigens when they are in the humors of our body, and cell-mediated response is going to target cells inside our body that have the antigens actually inside of them, and it's going to kill those cells. Now, if you were to talk about what is a nasty disease that we're fighting across the uh, world right now, what's the big pandemic that we have today, that would be HIV or human immunodeficiency virus. Now what makes human immunodeficiency virus really, really nasty? Well, it's a retrovirus, uh, it does high mutation rates, but the biggest one is that HIV is actually going to infect helper T cells. And so by killing helper T cells, it stops the humoral response, it stops that cell-mediated response as well. So let's put that on a timeline. Let's say you get a cold today. So if you get exposed to a cold today, Days later, the virus count is going to increase, but your body's going to sense that and it's going to make antibodies. It's going to make B cells, it's going to make T cells. It's going to increase the amount of those, and so we can fight the infection. And so really, you don't sense getting a cold. What you sense normally is getting better from a cold. And so this area right here is going to be killing of all those viruses then we decrease the amount of antibodies. Let's say you get exposed to that same cold weeks later. Well, you have way more antibodies already, and those antibodies are more better. In other words, they function more correctly and quickly. And so you will fight that infection off, but you don't even know that you did. And even years later, you could have a reinfection years later, and again, we have so much of those memory cells after two, uh, two infections that you're not even going to feel getting that cold unless there's a change in that antigen or a change in that pathogen to the point where their shape is actually changing. We have antibodies for it. And so again, that's a specific response. We're targeting specific invaders inside our body. Um, but again, defense mechanisms are set up to pre prevent uh, infection due to pathogens. And I hope that's helpful.